and we're going to name 10 things that we learned from this past week. This past Sunday, at least. The week isn't over yet. We got Monday Night Football tonight. Number one, the Lions will ruin playoff hopes. That is takeaway number one. Okay, they will not be making the NFL playoffs. They're not quite there yet as far as their talent level goes. But against the Packers and the Cardinals and the Broncos, those are three games that they have at the end of the season. Those are three teams that will probably fight for playoff seeding. The Packers, one of the best teams in the NFL, you'd assume that they would compete with maybe the Arizona Cardinals to get the number one seed, to get that number one bye. Then you got the Denver Broncos, who are also 3-0. and But you'd expect them to uh, fight for a playoff push in the AFC wildcard race. The Lions, those three games, they're going to ruin the playoff hopes for those three teams. They could surprise people. They've been staying close in a lot of these games. And I think that when it comes down to them, if you're a fan of any one of those three teams, the Packers, the Cardinals, and the Broncos, later on in the season, when you're fighting for that playoff spot, the Lions are going to ruin your dreams. Just remember this. Just bookmark this video. Week three takeaway, the Lions will ruin playoff hopes. Takeaway number two, Brian Flores is a good coach. And I say that because the amount of injuries that they've been having on the offensive line, at the quarterback position, just on offense, on defense, Flores has still been able to stay somewhat, you know, keep the game close. In week one and week three, at least. Week one, he got a one-point victory over the New England Patriots. Week three, went into overtime against the up-and-coming Las Vegas Raiders. Week two, you know, the Buffalo Bills are just incredible. But Brian Flores, with everything thrown his way, was able to coach a solid game. So Brian Flores, takeaway number two, he is a good coach. Takeaway number three, sticking on that Raiders and Dolphins game. The Raiders' defense is great. Okay, they drafted Trayvon Morig. Trayvon Mullen has been looking great. Casey Hayward, you probably don't know this, but going into week three, he had the highest pro football focus grade as far as coverage goes. Casey Hayward did. He got banged up, unfortunately, uh, this past week. But Max Crosby has been playing uh, at a high level as well. So the Raiders' defense is actually very, very good. That is takeaway number three. Takeaway number four, Javante Williams is the future of the Denver Broncos. Melvin Gordon, yeah, 18 carries this past week. Okay, he's going to continue to get his touches. That's okay, but I'm talking about the future. Maybe it's towards the end of the season. Maybe it's next year if they decide to move on with Melvin Gordon. Javante Williams is going to be great. If you were listening to that game between the Jets and the Broncos, you – Notice that the commentator was saying that Teddy Bridgewater said that Javante Williams reminds him of Alvin Kamara. Everybody says that. Everybody said people said that about Aaron Jones, and they kind of, you know, mimic and mirror the play of Alvin Kamara. But Javante Williams, the future. The next takeaway: the Chiefs are they in trouble? They are last place in the AFC West. My takeaway on that, and my take is, don't worry. The Chiefs are okay. It's just, it's early on. It was a schedule. They faced the Ravens. They faced the Chargers, who are kind of up and down, but also have the capability of upsetting some teams like they did against the Dallas Cowboys uh, just last week. So for the people that are freaking out about the Kansas City Chiefs, do not freak out. That is the next takeaway. After that, the Steelers are set to miss the playoffs. I'm going to go ahead. Mm, I don't know if I want to go ahead and call it, but I think right now it's safe to say that uh, the Steelers at least won't be winning the AFC North. So as far as making the playoffs, I don't know. But the AFC North, I think that goes in the hands of either the Baltimore Ravens or the Cleveland Browns. The next takeaway, the Bengals defense, speaking of the AFC North, is not bad. The Bengals defense is actually pretty good. I mean, they face the Bears. They face the Vikings, who are uh, capable of turning the ball over, yes, but... I mean, this defense has been looking pretty good this year. Agree? Disagree? I like the Bengals' defense this year. Uh, but speaking of decent defenses, the next takeaway, Washington's defense has gone from being great to just above average. So they're not one of the top five defenses in the NFL now, I would say. Now, they did face the Buffalo Bills' high-powered offense, but then the week before that, the New York Giants weren't able to contain them on offense. Hey, I mean, I think the Washington football team defense is still great, but they have taken a step down, and now they are just merely above average. That's what I would say. 
Uh, we've got a couple more takeaways. Patriots offense still a work in progress. We knew this going into the season, and then when Mac Jones took over, we were like, oh, this is a big step up. Look at the way that Mac Jones has been playing. And then we realize, okay, yeah, he's been looking great in preseason just because he's been playing against second team and third team offenses or defenses. And they're still a work in progress. So I think they have the right idea with the two tight end sets. I think they have the right idea of, okay, Jacoby Myers, let's just give him a lot of receptions. And uh, Nelson Aguilar and Kendrick Bourne could be these deep threats. I get it. Still a work in progress. And it's going to be pretty tough uh, against Tom Brady and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers this week. And then the last takeaway, the Rams are the best team in the NFL. I said it. This is everything that the Rams imagined when they traded for Matthew Stafford. They already have the defense. Now they just wanted to bolster the offense, and they felt like the only weak point at that point on offense was unfortunately Jared Goff. Not saying that he was bad, but he just wasn't great. And Matthew Stafford, his whole entire career, has been labeled as a player that has tendencies of being a good quarterback, but never making it to the promised land, never getting past the first round of the playoffs. Well, now you can expect that the Rams are going to get past the first round of the playoffs, maybe even get a first round bye at this point because the Rams just topped the defending Super Bowl champs and proved that they are the best team in the NFL. Ten takeaways to take away from this past Sunday from week three.